I have received a lot of requests for a cloud security or cyber security roadmap that starts or focuses on the cloud, not the on-premises one. I have done the due diligence, I have done the study, and also with my wide knowledge in cloud and cloud security, I said, okay, so let's find out through AI and with my knowledge, what would be the right roadmap that one would take in order to establish her or himself into a sweet spot, safe spot away from the AI impact in cloud security or cybersecurity. So let's go ahead without further ado and look at what I have for you. But before that, please consider subscribing to the channel, activate the notifications to receive all the goodies that we are publishing on a weekly basis. And also if you benefit from the video, please don't forget a like, we will appreciate it. And also share the video with whomever you think is going to benefit from this knowledge. All right, so let's take it step by step. What would a fresher in IT, someone who is out of college or starting in IT and aiming at cloud cybersecurity, or someone who is transitioning into IT, or even someone who is in IT, but would like to upskill in cybersecurity or cloud cybersecurity to be more specific. So the first step we are going to look at is the foundations and the modern IT skills. In a previous video, I have mentioned to you what are the modern IT skills and why people think there are no fresher jobs, but the reality was or is that they are preparing themselves with the wrong foundations and the wrong skills, and that's why they can't find jobs easily. So for cloud cyber security or cloud security, you need to start with foundations, definitely. For someone who doesn't know IT, I need to understand what is a network, what's an IP address, what's a cloud, what is DevOps, what is a data center, why did we shift from data center to the cloud, and what is the cloud that we need to secure, what are the different models, the different types, and the different services. We can't get into security without passing through a strong security foundation. And Security Plus from CompTIA is an excellent resource for this foundation. There is an alternative we are going to discuss, but this one is the most known one. I need to know what I'm going to secure. So I need an introduction into the cloud. Azure or AWS are the ones who are the two front runners when it comes to market share globally. Which one is in higher demand in your country? That's the one you should start with. Then definitely a cloud security professional or even a cloud professional must know automation and must know Linux as the back of their hands. So I have to have a strong Linux foundation and bash scripting for automation. Don't forget the Python for automation as well, because you will use it for automating tasks and, for example, Selenium and other stuff that have to do with uh, web scrapping and stuff like that for automation, dealing with files, uh, automating stuff on the cloud. So all of that are going to be beneficial with Python. You are going to have scripts and code that you are going to write, whether with Bash or with Python or eventually with Terraform as well. So when you do this, you would like to have versions, right? So version one, at this day, this is what we implemented. We went to version 1.1 and this is what we updated. You need to have version control and you can roll back. If you have a new version that is erroneous, causes problems, then you can uh, roll back into the previous version. So for that, you have to maintain versions and get and GitHub is the best way to do that. A lot of the applications that you're going to secure are going to be containerized in the cloud. So. AWS um, EKS, or maybe Azure AKS, or maybe Google GKS, all are Kubernetes-based orchestration or clusters where workloads are going to be hosted, applications are going to be hosted. So you need to know Docker and Kubernetes, and you need to dive deeper into the security side of Kubernetes as well. All right, what certificates I would consider with the foundation as a stage? If you are going to look for a job to get into IT, get some funds to fund or invest into the rest of your roadmap, then RHCSA is a good choice. And that would qualify you to apply for associate or intern systems administrator, or maybe junior technical support engineer, system support engineer. 
if you do Terraform, why don't you get the Terraform certificate as well? Easy, $70, and you can do it at home without any difficulties, and you will have two certificates. So now you are into this, maybe four months into this, five months into this, and now you have two certificates, and you can start applying for jobs. Next, I'm trying to secure the cloud. I have to dive deeper into the cloud. So depending on which one is more common and in higher demand in your geography, then Azure Fundamentals and Azure Admin Administrator or Cloud Practitioner and Certified Solutions Architect Associate from AWS. If you can do both, the, the more the merrier because now you are, you are certifying yourself. You are progressing as a multi-cloud cybersecurity professional. That is much stronger than being only one cloud. One would tell me, no, 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 no. I need to save time and I need to reach the goal quickly and then I can upskill into the other cloud. That's fine. Search and ask which one is in higher demand and has more opportunities in your country and go for that one. All right, I, we haven't yet dived deeper into security, right? So this one is going to include a lot of security knowledge and services and this one as well. But now we need to specialize in security. So Kubernetes, CKS, way to go. That's the security specialization within Kubernetes or CNCF. Why don't I take the CK as well, the Certified Kubernetes Administrator? Yeah, that's fine. So if you have studied anyways, why don't you do the Administrator and the Security Specialist? So that makes you even stronger candidate when it comes to EKS and AKS and all that, because now you can administer the entire thing, the Kubernetes deployment, including security. For AWS, I need to dive deeper into security. So the security specialty is the way to go. And it's a sweet certificate, not difficult at all. If you have done the security solution, the solutions architect associate, this is another 15, 20 hours of videos that you need to study. And probably in three weeks, one month, you can finish it. If you have done Azure, then the Azure Security Engineer Associate is the security specialization or the security focus certificate within, within Azure. Then we have the certificate that is not very famous yet. It's getting popularity from the Security Alliance, the Cloud Security Alliance, and that is the Cloud uh, Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge. I would take it if it gets more popular and if the employers start asking for it. And then you have the DevSecOps. Are we also including DevSecOps? Yes, we are including DevSecOps. And for that, because if you want to do DevSecOps, it has two parts. Part is in the cloud, but also there is a part which is the pipeline itself. So for that, you will need here either Jenkins, maybe GitHub Actions, or you will need also the GitLab, one of these, or Argo CD, one of these tools that will give you the CI CD understanding and the ability to build pipelines. And of course, we can take that down into here if we consider it as the modern IT skills. And that is fascinating because it proves that if you'd like to be a cybersecurity professional, including DevSecOps, then you need to know DevOps. And DevOps and cloud, the difference between them is minimal. And as you can see in this video, that the delta between being a cloud and DevOps engineer, as opposed to only a cloud engineer is not major. It's about four weeks or six weeks of study and practice and projects, of course. So by doing this, I have become someone that have spent 12 months, more or less, if you are talking about two hours of study per day, if you put more hours, then it will be shorter, with a potential of three certificates, and here four certificates, and here I have two certificates. So that's nine certificates of cloud and of systems or system administration and security and specialization as well. CCSP is the corresponding one to the CISSP for those of you who know what I'm talking about from ISC squared, but this one requires five years of experience and one or more years in one of the domains but also they have an associate version. This is professional, but you ha they have also an associate version for those who don't have the five years. So this is what I think would make you a cybersecurity uh, professional in the cloud. But of course, we did not include here the compliance and the ISO and the other stuff. So let's go ahead 
to ChatGPT, ask the questions in the right way and see what will be the suggested roadmap. So here's what I asked. Design a cloud security professional roadmap for absolute beginners in IT without any knowledge, zero knowledge. This should take them to a level that is safe from AI impact to fresher jobs. And as I mentioned, the video that I have pointed to before talks about the AI impact to fresher jobs or to IT roles in general. Also should include vendor certificates and vendor neutral ones as applicable, of course, with project portfolio suggestions and timelines. So all of that has to be included. The understanding, they got it right. Design a complete career path for someone with zero IT knowledge. Help you break into cybersecurity, cloud and DevSecOps. Include vendor neutral and vendor specific certification and ensure practical skills, hands-on labs and projects, and a strong portfolio at the end for the security roles. So total duration is 14 to 16 months. And the reason behind that is it has included both AWS and Azure. And it had included also the part that has to do with GRC and compliance and auditing. So this 14 to 16 months will prepare you with two hours per day to all of these jobs in security. Cloud security analyst, security operation SOC analyst, DevSecOps engineer junior, cloud security engineer associate, and GRC and compliance associate. Okay, phase zero, pre-IT onboarding. Just the general knowledge about IT. Linux basics, how computers and networks function, networking basics, terminology. The duration is three to four weeks, and this what was suggested, Google IT support certificate. You don't need to. You can look at the fundamentals path roadmap that I have mentioned before, and that includes all what you need for this step. Phase one, cybersecurity foundations. And this is for two months, second and third months. Build a security mindset and learn fundamentals of risk encryption and access control. Certificates, Security Plus from CompTIA. An optional, a free one, certified in cybersecurity, and that is from ISC Squared. This is what you are going to learn, confidentiality and so on. Suggestions for the labs, try Hack Me, Security Plus Path, and Wireshark Password Cracking. Projects you can do, secure my PC checklist, create a risk assessment for a fake company. So now we are ready after three months for SOC analyst internships. I need to take it deeper now. So phase two is cloud fundamentals, month four. And there are two certificates that have been included, cloud practitioner from AWS and Azure fundamentals from Microsoft. And this is what you are going to learn. And this is what you are going to do as hands-on labs. And these are suggestions for the project. Pay attention that here they assume that you know GitHub, but we have included it in the slide in the foundations because I mentioned zero knowledge in IT. So that's a glitch on the AI side. Time is four weeks. Phase three, cloud security and vendor specific skills, months five, six, seven, and eight. Certificates, security specialty, and Azure security engineer. I wouldn't do this. I would do the associate and the Azure, Azure administrator first before delving into the deep security part. So if you have done AWS, this is the right next step after the security uh, certified uh, solutions architect associate. And this will be the right one for Microsoft Azure if you have went or started with that. And this is what you are going to be learning. But of course, a lot more than that, you are going to learn a lot more services, Macy's and, and others, uh, scanners and WAF and, and Shield and DDoS. And there's a lot of things that you are going to learn in these certificates. Projects, you can do set up IM log monitoring encryption for a mock company. And also you can do the cloud architecture, security architecture, and that was a 12 weeks period. Then DevSecOps and automation. So for this, I'm expected to learn HashiCorp and Terraform and DevSecOps uh, professional certificate. This is optional, but it is recommended. It's getting traction. And then here are the stuff that I need to learn. So CICD, although I said zero knowledge in IT, they are assuming that this is going to teach me that in, in details. DevSecOps Professional okay, will cover GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps. If not, then Jenkins, GitLab, GitHub Actions, Argo CD, CircleCI, all of these, any one of these would do.
Secrets management is important, and then container security, Docker and Kubernetes and all that. So they have not mentioned Docker and Kubernetes in details, but it is very important to build that in the foundation. So the visual that we have put, if we combine it with this one, we get with a close to perfect uh, roadmap. Build CI CD uh, pipeline with GitHub Actions and static code analysis. Do static code analysis. Deploy secure resources with Terraform, and this is what I can do on GitHub. And I can also start to write articles, how I built a secure CI CD pipeline with GitHub Actions. Duration was eight weeks. Phase five is for the cloud governance risk and strategy. That could be taken as a follow-up step. Or if you like this area, if you like this area from what you have gone through, then risk and compliance, ISO 27000, NIST, GDPR, secure cloud architectures, data life cycle, legal audits, and privacy. All of these are areas that you are going to focus on, and these are the certificates you should consider. The CCSK, Cloud Security Knowledge, and CCSP. As I mentioned, the professional requires five years of experience. If not, then you go for the associate. So this is if you would like to add this. So now I am a well-rounded cyber security professional, not only infrastructure security, and the labs you can do and the projects you should consider doing as well in eight weeks. Phase six is preparing your resume, preparing your profile, preparing your GitHub profile, preparing your LinkedIn profile and applying for jobs. And you can also specialize if you'd like to. That is the, the blue team, for example, take the SC, the Azure Defender Sentinel, Splunk certificates, pen testing and some recommended certificates and options. Architect, take the TOGAF. Enterprise architect, and you can take the CISSP later, but this is more on the enterprise side than the cloud. And the GRC and compliance certificate, lead auditor, or COBIT, or C risk. All right, so this was the path, and here are the certificates that we have gone through along the path, and the classification also, whether it is vendor specific or vendor neutral, and the sequence of study or the duration of study as well, the timetable that you need to match this one to. So by the end of the roadmap, these are the projects that you can have on your GitHub uh, profile and LinkedIn and Medium and so on. And you will make you AI proof how by focusing on roles needing judgment, security architecture, compliance and strategy. The video that I talked about or I mentioned about AI impact explains very well that if you are in the senior level or on the architect side or the consultant side, you are safe for the next seven to 10 years from AI impact because that requires judgment, requires a lot of communication in person, and requires decision making, and AI is not mature enough to do this. To equip you with hands-on skills, AI can't fully automate, like DevSecOps and incident response, and building a public portfolio, critical proof of skill in the AI job market, and combining certificates and real projects, more than just paper knowledge. Of course, you can take it the second level into the AI security as well. So I wanted to assess what if I remove the GRC and compliance? Let's say some of you would like to do hands-on stuff more than going into the vendor agnostic and just checklists and documentation and all that. So if you remove this, then the plan will shrink the duration into 11 to 12 months. So if you put more than two hours a day, then you are going probably to shrink it, I don't know, to 8, 9, 10, and it depends whether you are coming fresh into IT, maybe it will be the standard 12 or 14 months, and if you have been in IT, probably it will take you shorter time frame. All right, hopefully this was beneficial. If you have any comments, please write them in the comments section. If you have any advice to add or remove from this roadmap based on knowledge, not opinions, please. If that is the case, put it in the comments so everyone will benefit and we can optimize and maybe produce another video. And if you like the video and benefited from that, please consider subscribing to the channel, activate the notification bell so you get the new videos. And if you like it, give us a like and share it with others so they benefit as well. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.